Hey everyone, Eclipse here. Welcome back to my first Red Dead 1 tutorial. And in this tutorial, I will be basically showing you whole setup of Red Dead Redemption 1 on your PC. So first of all, you're gonna need Xenia. Now, with Xenia, you also need a pretty good computer. So I'm gonna show you my specs right here. So the specs will be on the screen right now. And as you can see, my CPU is an Intel i5. And Xenia is a very, very, very CPU intensive device. Now I can run Red Dead perfectly fine with my Intel i5. Hopefully you guys have a better CPU than me because my CPU isn't really that good. So so this is the Xenia Canary. So I don't know the difference between the Xenia Canary and the Xenia Master, but I'm running it just fine. I'm running Red Dead just fine on Canary. So I'm gonna download Canary, save it. So here it is right here. So we're gonna grab these two files and then we're gonna go to the desktop. So on the desktop, we're gonna make ourselves a new folder and I'm gonna name this Xenia 2. I already have a folder name Xenia, which I didn't know, but I had to find it out the hard way. And then we are gonna open Xenia 2 or whatever folder it's called. And then we're gonna drop them in there. So now what we're gonna do is double click Xenia Canary. Uh, don't worry about this. And then as you can see, it's all working. It's all dandy, it's all good. But now as you can see, we have a config file. So this is kind of cool. So we're going to right click and we're going to edit with Notepad++. If you don't have Notepad++, please get Notepad++. It is a very annoying, tedious thing if you don't have it. So typically you wouldn't have to worry about these settings with a game like Red Dead 1. Although sometime if you watch a tutorial video, you know, there might be some videos that kind of tell you to swap some settings. So it's good to kind of get familiar with this text file over here. But right now we're going to click Control F and we're going to look up VSync. Now, um, typically I have VSync off and I typically run the game a lot better. Now this is very specific. If your computer can run Red Dead 1 very well, you know, if your CPU and graphics card is the same or better as mine, go ahead, you know, turn it off. But if you have a low end system, please, 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 I cannot say it enough. Keep VSync on. It caps the FPS, it keeps the game more stable, and overall, it's just a, a way, 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 way better to have, okay? So, I'm going to click Control S. That's all you need to swap, although there is something I do want to show you really quick. So, if you do Control F and you look up Draw, you can see right here, Draw Resolution Scale X, Draw Resolution Scale Y. Now, for me, I have them at 1. If your computer has a good CPU, okay, now... Please, please, please don't go down in the comments and say it's laggy because if you make this any higher than one, you could lag if you have a low end or even a medium end computer. I personally have to keep these settings at one, but if you swap them to two, the resolution gets way, way more scaled up, which means the game's going to be more clearer, clearer, less blurry and everything. But like I keep saying, I cannot stress this enough. If your computer's low end or medium end, please, please, please keep them at one. I have to keep them at one, so I'm gonna set it to one and click Control S to save. Or you can go up to file and then save. I already did though. So now you need to download your first game. So first of all, in the Xenia folder, we're gonna easily just make a folder called Games. Now the reason why we're doing this is to easily organize our game. So all of the folders, all the ISOs that we download will be in here. Now I ain't gonna tell you where to get Red Dead 1. And the reason for that is because I don't know how much trouble I'll get in overall. I don't know, so no one else does it it seems, so I'm just gonna be safe and not do it too. So I have my Red Dead Redemption Game of the Year ISO right here. So this is the file, this is where Red Dead 2 is all taking place. So for me, I'm just gonna copy it and then I'm just gonna paste it into here. So there we go, now it's complete, and now my game is in there. So right now, if I went to Xenia Canary, and I click File, I click Open, and then I click Desktop, and then I click Xenia 2, and I click Games, and then I click my ISO, it is gonna load, as you can see. There we go, as you can see, it's loading, it'll work perfect, and that should kind of be all, but no. We need one more step. I know, I know guys, one more step. So we're gonna right click, we're gonna click new, and then we're gonna type in patches for a folder. It needs to be all lowercase, it needs to look like this, okay? You need to go in the link down below, and as you can see, there is a lot of files here, okay? Let me tell you what to do. So click on one, scroll all the way down, hold shift, click, oh wow, wait, there's more. Hold shift, click the last one, so all of them are kind of blue. Right click, download. And what's that going to do is it's going to zip the 140 files that are in this Google Doc and it's going to download them. So what this is, is it's patches for every single playable game. And you might just be thinking, why don't I just download the Red Dead patch? Well, 
there might be some games you might want to download so it's good to just download all of them they're not that big on your space it's really no reason not to download them so you can see it popped up i'm gonna save i'm gonna go to my xenia 2 i'm gonna double click patch i'm gonna open my file explorer to the google drive and as you can see i have all these all these text files so we're gonna click on one control a to copy all drag the 140 into the patches right here and it shouldn't take that much because it's only like a couple couple of gigabytes so now that we're right here we're going to click on the top right and we're going to click up we're going to type in red dead and i forgot the d and so you need to find what your disk iso iso is named so i have disk one i gave you your disk one so i'm gonna right click this one i'm gonna edit with notepad plus plus now as you can see you have a lot of mobile jumbo don't worry i'll help you out with it right here unlock fps typically uh, I mean, you, you're going to want your FPS to be uncapped, so of course you're going to go with true on this one. What these are are settings. So it has the name, has a description of the setting, has the Arthur, and it has the false or true enabled. Now make sure the space between the equals and the true or the equals and the false. So you have the unlock FPS. That's the first setting that you definitely want to turn to true. Now you have disabled depth of field and motion blur. You can either keep this on false or you can make this true. Now, for me, I'm just going to put it through, through really quick. You have 16x and Siftropic filtering. I, I know I just said that completely wrong. Now, I believe this is 100% something that you don't want to enable unless you have a good CPU. This is definitely a performance type of thing, and I'm going to keep it at false. You have 360p mode. Now, be careful with these, okay? So what I just highlighted is 360p mode, 480p mode, and 540p mode. So what these do is it kind of downgrades the game and then upscales it to 720p, which in turn will increase your FPS depending on what mode you do. Now, the problem I had with doing this is it causes a black screen to kind of stutter on and it's basically unstoppable, uncontrollable, and it's just overall annoying when a black screen just keeps fading or not even fading just cutting in and out in and out and in and out it really distracts you from the game so i i'm gonna have to say to never turn these ones on so you have disable sun flare and it seems to disable a effect that sometimes will affect other people so you can see this prevents the sun flare effect which clips through buildings and props me personally i never ran into these issues so i keep this on false no trees performance mode now this is a very debatable topic when it comes to red dead one and exenia so people will actually turn on the no trees mode because they say it gives you a big boost in performance, but that's not typically the case. Now it could save a couple FPS, you know, maybe, you know, five to 10 FPS, but overall in the end, I think it's more important to have the game uh, foliage, you know, and more than just have five less FPS. So personally, I'll keep it on false. Even my game couldn't run, I'll still keep it at false. Skip grass occlusion. Just keep down what it is high quality post processing now again just like the uh 16x whatever filtering um i'd recommend keeping this on false unless you can you know you can run a game at high settings skip intro no this is something you want so skip intro of course you're going to want to put to true what this does is it skips the legal intro so the second you launch the game you're just into the main menu and you're ready to go you're ready to start it and that's what you want to do alternative script timing and asset garbage collection now it says may provide a small performance boost for cpu limited systems so clearly it seems like a good thing to do i'm gonna turn it on i don't exactly know what it does i'm pretty naive on that but it seems like it does only good things use separate audio heap i don't recommend that one aspect ratio i don't know exactly what that does it says to read whatever it is in the readme but of course there isn't one so now infinite horse stamina this is kind of cool so this is kind of a hacky type um patch but personally i did enable it because the horse stamina is really difficult to get used to after playing red dead 2 so personally i enabled it you don't have to of course but i just did bottomless clip infinite gun magazine size i don't have this on shocker um, i recommend you keep it off infinite ammo i recommend you keep that off too of course but of course if you want you can enable it and that's everything for the patch so what we're going to do is we're going to click Control s or file and then save exit out that's going to save the patch we don't need to do anything and so now you want to double click as in your canary and then you want to click display post processing settings and turn on the nvidia fast approximate and anti ally alias aliasing god i cannot say that normal quality just click the second one now people have turned this setting on and, and put it to 1000 stops and you know all this stuff and apparently it gives you more fps me personally it actually ruined my game more so i keep it on none um 
And uh, yeah, you can just click F6 to close it, or you just click dis uh, display post processing. So we're gonna click file, we're gonna click open, we're gonna double click Red Dead Redemption ISO. And as you can see, it's gonna load up just fine. Now, as you can see, there was no initial legal screen. Now you can full screen it by clicking display and full screen, or you just click an F11. So I'm gonna click normal. Now a save cannot be found, of course. So I'm gonna create a new game save. And you can download saves for this game. Now, as you can see, the loading bar on the top left is very, very fast. And the bottom left, as you can see, it is super, super fast. And that is because of the FPS being uncapped. Now, don't worry, your game's fine. It's just the loading screens that are uncapped. So as you can see in my game, the game is fairly good. Now, there might be some stuttering. My FPS might go from, you know, a solid 60 to like 40. But other than that, it's pretty much really, really good. And you shouldn't have to worry about anything, any problems. So yeah, that's how you install Red Dead Redemption for uh, PC. Soon I'll be making more videos, and uh, goodbye.